So far in class, we've actually looked at some of the applications of eigenvectors and eigenvalues. We've done some computations. We've seen some places that we might want to look at them. Um, we're actually going to do today another application of eigenvectors and eigenvalues, namely how, how we can compute something called the diagonalization of a matrix and how we can determine whether or not a diagonalization exists. So let's look at one of the reasons we'd be interested in computing diagonal matrices in the first place. Um, diagonal matrices have really nice properties in that we already know that it's really easier for us to use the diagonal form of a matrix to calculate the determinant. Namely, for diagonal matrices, the determinant is just the product of our entries on the diagonal. So this is pretty nice. It's just 3 times 7, or 21. Um, similarly, for eigenvalues, the way we compute an eigenvalue is we looked at our matrix A and subtracted off um, some lambda times i n, and we computed the determinant of this matrix. So for diagonal matrices, um, our matrix was actually fairly easy for us to compute the characteristic polynomial of, namely, our determinant here is again just going to be this product of entries on our diagonal, so this 7 minus lambda. So the places where our determinant is 0 are exactly the entries that we saw. So our eigenvalues we can read off immediately from our matrix. And similarly, the other nice thing about diagonal matrices is a diagonal matrix will have for eigenvectors um, just the unit vectors. Sim and our final nice application of having a diagonal matrix is that we can pretty quickly compute powers in that our formula for the powers of a diagonal matrix, so this 3, 0, 0, 7 raised to some power k, is our power of a diagonal matrix is the power of each of the entries on the diagonal. So we've got a nice formula that we can really quickly read off um, all three of these quantities from a diagonal matrix. That, Given a regular matrix, it might take us a lot more computational oomph to get there. Now that we've seen some of the reasons that we might like to have a diagonal matrix in hand, let's actually see one of the other reasons. Um, given some arbitrary matrix, if we know we can write it as the product of some invertible matrix P and some diagonal matrix D, let's actually see how we can use this to find a formula for our powers of A. Um, in particular, since A is equal to PDP, if I'm trying to take, uh, or PDP inverse, if I'm trying to take the product of A times itself, K times, what this looks like is I'm taking a product, k times, of um, matrices uh, PDP inverse, then PDP inverse, all the way up to PDP inverse here. So this is k times repeated. Each of our inner products between P inverse and P, so each one of these inner pairs, um, P inverse P is just our identity matrix. So for each of these inner terms, they're all going to be equal to our identity matrix. So what we're going to be able to rewrite this as is P, D to the, we have, um, since there are K copies here, we'll have K copies of our diagonal matrix times P inverse. So for our um, A inverse here, what we're able to read off really quickly is it'll be our matrix P times uh, 3 to the K, 0, 0, 7 to the K, times P inverse. For our matrix P, um, we're actually going to be able to compute the, uh, the inverse very quickly. So I'm not going to do this um, for show here, but it's just 2, 1, negative 1, negative 1. So this is going to be our inverse of that matrix P. Um, in particular, if we looked at this expression, uh, so right now we're trying to compute A to the K, this is 1, 1, negative 1, negative 2, times 3 to the K, 0, 0, 7 to the k, and 2, 1, negative 1, negative 1. Um, we could actually read off our product in each of these terms. So this is going to, let's leave our first one alone for the moment. Um, we're going to get, uh, it's 3 to the k uh, times 2 plus 0 times negative 1. So this is 2 times 3 to the k. 
uh, it's 3 to the k times 1 here, so this is just 3 to the k. Uh, 0 times uh, 2 plus negative 1 times 7 to the k, uh, and negative 7 to the k here. So there's our, our first part of our product, and our closed formula for our power a to the k here then is we'll be able to collect it just from looking at all of these terms. So this is uh, 2 times 3 to the k minus 7 to the k, uh, 3 to the k plus, uh, minus 7 to the k, uh, negative 2 times 3 to the k, uh, plus 2 times 7 to the k, make sure that looks looks readable, and negative 3 to the k plus 2 times 7 to the k. So there's our closed formula um, for a to the k, making use of our ability to take these inner powers of d. And so actually, where I would probably stop if I was writing out this formula personally is I might leave it just looking at this piece, but now we've got a nice a nice way of expressing powers of this matrix now that we have this in hand. So the next question that should pop into your head is, okay, so it was really nice that in this case, um, in this particular case, we had a matrix where A was the product of some invertible matrix P, a diagonal matrix D, and another, uh, the inverse of our first matrix. So that's great. Um, we call this diagonalizability if a matrix can be written in this form. And the only condition we need for a matrix to be diagonalizable is that n has uh, that A has n linearly independent um, eigenvectors, where this n is whatever the dimension of our matrix A is. So if A is an n by n matrix, um, we need to, to base, essentially this, this says that our eigenvectors are going to have to span a basis for the space that A is a linear transformation of. And one of the nice things that we get out of this is our diagonal matrix itself, um, if it exists, is actually going to have as entries all of our eigenvalues. And the columns of this invertible matrix that we're going to be interested in is going to actually be um, a linearly independent set of all of our possible eigenvectors. So for our matrix A that we considered the last time, um, A was actually the product of a diagonal matrix with our lambda 1 was 3 and our lambda 2 was 7. Our two corresponding eigen, um, eigenvectors that we're going to get for this matrix we would obtain by actually looking at and row reducing uh, the matrices um, A minus 3 times I2 and a minus 7 times i2. So the, uh, the span of the row reduced version of this um, would be exactly our eigenvector set. And in particular, the p that we found, uh, the p that we started with on the other page, which was 1, 1, uh, negative 1, negative 2, um, this says that our, our eigenvalue here, if our eigenvalue 3 is 3, our eigenvector, uh, v lambda 1, must be spanned by 1, negative 1, and our eigenvalue 2, um, our, our second eigenvalue 7, should correspond to eigenvector 1, negative 2. So we can see this relationship again, so this is just one more recap. Our matrix P and our matrix D that we, calc uh, that we were given in the previous um, example um, correspond to, again, eigenvectors lambda 1 of 3, lambda 2 of 7, and so our first eigenvector here is matched up with our first column corresponding to eigenvector uh, v lambda 1, 1 negative 1, and v lambda 2, let's change color for this so that we can you can see this later in notes, eigenvector 2 is 1, neg uh, one negative 2. Um, note that 
it, we actually would have had an infinite family of eigenvectors um, given by each of these, but the dimension of the eigen of the subspace of R2 um, corresponding to eigenvector 3 is spanned by this one negative one. So these are just a few examples of places that we're going to be able to use diagonalizability or um, the diagonalization of a matrix to really quickly um, get at um, get at powers of these matrices. And in particular, this tells us uh, this gives us a hint at a strategy to actually diagonalize matrices. In our next video, we'll actually um, have a how-to guide to how to calculate a matrix diagonalization using a technique really similar. Um, to the previous example, and we're going to talk about how, given a matrix that is diagonalizable, the set of linearly independent eigenvectors that we choose actually forms a basis for Rn, and in particular we call this an eigenbasis.